LaserGene 10 includes several new enhancements for SNP reporting in SeekMan Pro. In this video, I'm going to show you what's new in the SNP report by looking at an XOM assembly from SeekMan Engine. However, all of the things I'm going to show you here apply to other assembly types as well. You can see more videos showing how to assemble and analyze data from different sequencing technologies and workflows on our website. So here I'm going to open the SNP report. And you see we have about half a million SNPs. And by just applying some basic filtering, I can narrow this down to about 90,000 SNPs. And another filter I want to apply is max coding feature distance. I'll enter 25 here. And now SeekMan is only showing me SNPs that occur within 25 bases upstream or downstream of a CVS or Exxon feature. If I check the box next to show code on bases and distance to feature, SeekMan will include some additional columns that show the code on change caused by the SNP and the distance to the nearest coding feature. You'll notice that for SNPs that occur within a coding feature, the impact column, which is new in LaserGene 10, shows what impact the SNP will have on the gene. Here, coding changes are shown in magenta. If I'm only interested in SNPs that result in a coding change, I can use this dropdown to show coding change SNPs only. And now everything in the impact column is magenta. I can use the same dropdown to show only SNPs that result in a nonsense change. We can look at any of these SNPs in more detail by double clicking. This opens the alignment view, and here we can see that this SNP occurs in the middle of a CDS feature and is a heterozygous change from a C to a G that would result in a premature stop codon. I'm going to switch this filter back to showing coding and non-coding SNPs, and then sort on the coding feature distance column to see SNPs that occur upstream or downstream of a coding sequence, shown in magenta and orange. Notice that many of these SNPs show splice in the new splice column, which indicates whether a SNP occurs in a splice site. This SNP, which is shown in orange, is three bases to the right of a coding sequence on the top strand. And if we look at this SNP in the alignment view, we can confirm that it is to the right of a CDS and located in the five prime splice site recognition sequence. Two other columns which are new in LaserGene 10 are GURP and user ID. GURP scores are specific to assemblies using our new human template package during setup in SeekMan Engine. And these give an indication of how conserved a given base is with higher scores meaning a more conserved base. The user ID shows SNPs that were annotated in SeekMan Pro in a previous assembly and then saved to the genome template package. I can see a complete list of the user SNPs by going to SNP Show User SNPs. And this report shows all the user annotated SNPs in my project and the source assembly where they were annotated. I can add to this list directly from the SNP report by checking in the SNP column to confirm these SNPs, and then choosing SNP Append Checked User SNPs. And now you can see my SNPs were added to the list. I can save these SNPs by closing the report and then saving when prompted. And this is going to add these SNPs to the template package. So if I use the same template package in a future assembly, those SNPs will already be annotated. Now, I want to mention that you can use the same workflow to create a template package starting from a GenBank or FASTA file as your reference sequence. And this is useful if you're working with a non-model organism but want to have your own annotated SNPs. If you have further questions about using the SNP report in SeekMan Pro or any other questions about our software, please visit our website, dnastar.com, or contact us at support at dnastar.com.